nights that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star sprinkle banner yet away Oh, the land of the free and the home of Good afternoon. I'm not quite sure whose idea it was for me to follow her, but <laughs> I think it might have been Jeff. I haven't been listening to his legal advice lately. <laughs> you know, it's an honor. It's an honor to welcome you all to EPA's National Honor Award Ceremony. Today we honor the incredible EPA staff who have played a critical role in helping to achieve our mission of protecting public health and the environment. Whether you're in the room with us here at headquarters or joining virtually, we all join to celebrate our awardees and their contributions to this great agency. This year's winners, an exceptional group of over 1,200 EPA employees, deserve to be recognized for their tremendous hard work, innovative ideas, unwavering commitment to our agency and to our country. I'm deeply humbled to call every single one of you my colleague. You all represent the best and the brightest of this nation and are essential to the success of EPA. Across all 10 regions, headquarters, and in every single lab and office, each of you plays an important role in advancing EPA's mission. And every single day, I'm inspired not only by the volume of what we all accomplish together, but also by the level of excellence that we've achieved in the work that we've all decided to take on. We've made significant progress in the last few years, from standing up programs to cut pollution and bring clean energy to communities all across the country, to deploying over $100 billion in resources from the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law and the Inflation Reduction Act, to our emergency response and recovery efforts in East Palestine and Lahaina, to establishing our first ever national program office specifically dedicated to environmental justice and so much more. Folks, I want to be clear. We have achieved so much because of you. It goes without saying that the folks at EPA are immensely talented and very capable. But for many of us, our jobs are bigger than just work. There's a passion and a deep commitment that drives all of us every single day. There's a pride in knowing that our work is shaping a brighter and healthier future for generations that will come after us. And over the next year, I know that there is a lot of important work to be done, but I have no doubt that this immensely talented team is more than capable of helping us reach our goals. So I hope you will join me in redoubling our efforts to address some of the most pressing environmental challenges of our lifetime. Congratulations again to all the honorees. These awards are a culmination of your incredible work over the last few years, and I can't wait to see what you and all of us will achieve together. It's now a pleasure to turn it over to my partner in crime, Deputy Administrator <laughs> Janet McKay. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Administrator Regan. We know that there is uh, no bigger champion for the EPA workforce than you as you go around the country. Um, and we really appreciate your leadership and your inspiration. So thanks for being here today on um, what's maybe the, the, the best day of the year at EPA, right, to recognize so many of you. And um, Linda scooted out of here. She must ha have had to 
Oh, yeah, okay. I was going to say, you must have been going to sing somewhere else, but um, <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know about you. I'm still quivering um, from, from that performance of the anthem. So it's an honor to be here with all of you today, those of you who are here, those of you who are joining virtually, and I hope that there are many, many people who are joining um, virtually to, to recognize some truly extraordinary work um, with everybody recognizing that the work that people do every day, most of it is award worthy, right? And we take these opportunities to recognize some truly outstanding and special people and special efforts, but we get to do it every year, which means that we get to um, recognize different people and different efforts every year. Um, my job today is to introduce our guest speaker Stan Myberg. The, the notes say Dr. Stan Myberg, and I know that that's true. He has a PhD, which he wrote on the Prevention of Sig Significant Deterioration Air Pollution Program, just so you know. Um, I think he may be the only person in history who <laughs> wrote his thesis on that. Um, many of you know Stan um, from the 39 years, Stan, that you spent at the agency. He's an EPA legend. Um, and um, in addition to the administrator, I just told him the greatest supporter because he's in the room and I needed to do that. But, um, <laughs> but there's, there's also no greater supporter of EPA, the agency, its mission, and its people than Stan. Stan served in many roles, including um, the job that I have now, a couple years as acting deputy administrator. He was deputy regional administrator in Region 4, in Region 6, many, many positions he's held um, at EPA in many offices. During his long tenure at EPA, he showed his commitment to leading efforts at wherever he was in protecting our air and water, cleaning up hazardous and toxic waste sites, building collaborative relationships with states and tribal environmental programs, and promoting sound management. Over this long career, working in regional offices, in headquarters offices, he accumulated a lot of wisdom and plain old common sense. Actually, I think he brought that with him. Um, and uh, boy, do we need those kinds of qualities um, to run an agency like this. Um, it's an agency with such a significant, important mission in the world with the wide range of things that we do, technical, policy, administrative, legal, financial, and I'm leaving a whole bunch out, um, scientific, um, and also a tremendous amount of interest in what we do from people on the outside of the agency, as there should be. Um, Stan remains um, uh, committed to uh, contributing to the protection of human health and the environment. Currently, he serves as executive director of the Center for Energy, Environment, and Sustainability at Wake Forest University, of which he is a, a proud alumnus. So Stan, thank you for joining us today, and I will turn it over to you. My goodness, it's nice to be back. And Janet, thank you so much for that ridiculously over-the-top introduction. <laughs> uh, you might have said the only person crazy enough to do a PhD in PSD, as it was called. <laughs> so uh, I'm very grateful for that. The good news about doctoral degrees is once they've given it to you, they can't take it back. <laughs> but it really is a tremendous honor to be here. And for those of you who are receiving awards, please accept uh, not only my congratulations, but my gratitude as well. Because like Administrator Regan said, you represent accomplishments that reflect the good work that goes on at EPA every single day. And I'm especially pleased though to see the agency once again hosting a national awards event. And I know that we have many people online in addition to the people in the room, but it's nice to see this for the first time in several years being an in-person event too. It really means a lot and I hope that all of you who are here will remember this day. So to commemorate this, I brought a prop and it's really one of my most treasured ones. It is. And I know that not everybody can see it or whether the cameras can see this, I don't know. This is a picture of a much younger me <laughs> receiving a silver medal from Administrator Bill Ruckel's house 40 years ago. <laughs> I had the privilege.
privilege of getting to show this picture to Bill um, and his wife, Jill, many years later. Well, Jill's comment to me was, well, you haven't aged that much. <laughs> I'd like to know who put her up to that whopper. Um, I will keep Bill's response to myself. But since I brought up Bill Ruckel's house in a conference center that's named for him, um, I thought I'd stay with him for just a minute. Now, I realize that many of you in this room and those watching online are too young to remember Bill's service at EPA from personal experience. I see a few of you who do remember this, but many of you are, do not. And as humbling as it is to say this, I am painfully aware that some of you were not even born by the uh, end of his second service as administrator at EPA in 1984. But for both groups, uh, those of you who experienced it and those of you who can hear about it by others telling stories, you can know that Bill Ruckel's house gave EPA a great gift. And the gift was a set of core values that have stood the test of time. Follow the law, follow the science, and be transparent. Bill displayed political courage. He stood for high ethical and moral values. He had ultimate faith in the wisdom of Americans. And he treated people, no matter who they were, with respect and dignity. Now, Bill was famous in the day for holding these wide-ranging meetings with staff from all over EPA, soliciting ideas and opinions and input from everyone without diminishing the fact that at the end of the day, it was his job to make decisions on behalf of the agency and to stand behind them. He did not win every political battle. No administrator wins every political battle. But he, along with other great leaders, built an EPA that would operate in the public eye, welcome dialogue, educate and engage the public, and listen eagerly, speak clearly, and push for achievable progress. So today, we honor a new generation of leaders who follow that same vision. This leadership occurs everywhere in EPA. We honor engineers and attorneys, scientists and technical experts, regional and headquarters colleagues, on-scene coordinators in the field, and those who work from home or in the office. We honor those without whom nothing in EPA gets done and whose contributions are often overlooked. Administrative support staff, grant specialists, payroll managers, contract specialists, and facilities managers. Please join me in giving everyone here a round of applause. And we honor you all both those receiving awards and those whose accomplishments we recognize in other ways. Because now, as much at any time in EPA's history, your country needs you. You are here in the agency at an historic moment. The Inflation Reduction Act and the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act have entrusted EPA with resources the likes of which the agency has never seen. You have opportunities which we who were here before you could only dream of to remedy historic shortfalls in water services in disadvantaged communities, to create the infrastructure for a green economy, to oversee the transition to renewable energy and electric vehicles, to clean up abandoned hazardous waste sites, to safeguard America from toxic pollutants, and to establish justice as part of the daily language of environmental protection. I hope you will make the best of these opportunities. It will take hard work, dedication, skill, and a certain tolerance for ambiguity. But if there is any group that has these traits in abundance, it is the people who work for EPA. The mission of EPA is to protect human health and the environment. And I want you to say that with me. The mission of EPA is to protect human health and the environment. What a noble 
phrase, what a noble saying, what noble words. Now, when you reach my age, I hope you too will be able to reflect on accomplishments that helped fulfill that mission and to reflect on the many talented people you worked with to achieve them. Former EPA Administrator Mike Levitt once compared working at EPA to a generational relay race where you take the baton from your predecessors, you run your laps, and then you hand the baton on to the next generation. And it's a very fitting metaphor because we have not reached the finish line. And the finish line, and even the race, change as the generations pass and we face different, difficult and different problems. All of you have probably seen the chart. I know everybody in the air office has seen this chart, um, which shows how emissions of criteria air pollutants have decreased by 78% while the economy tripled since 1970. And that's only one example of how very successful EPA has been in the 53 years of its existence. But it's worth remembering that in 1970, this seemed impossible, or at least it seemed as difficult as some of the challenges you face today. And now, having reached some of the goals set out in that act and in others, we have new ones. You won't achieve them all at once. And while you will no doubt do better than we did, I suspect you'll have your share of mistakes and missteps. We sure did. But to use one of my favorite phrases, do not let the perfect be the enemy of the good and never, never give up. And so I thank you as someone who remembers and treasures the opportunities I had to work as one of you at this remarkable agency and thank you for the privilege of sharing today's moments with you. Thank you very much. Thank you much, so much, Stan. Um, uh, one of the things that uh, I particularly took note of was the image of the relay race, because I, I, I often think about what, how we have to take the long view in these jobs, and we get you know, day to day, there's ups and downs, and sometimes it seems like it's mostly downs, um, and then you get a court decision and you're plunged into the depths of despair, um, and, and then, um, you're not? <laughs> I am. Um, uh, <laughs> And, but then the, the world goes on, you know, the, the world goes on. In fact, I remember um, when I was working um, with the folks in the Office of Air and Radiation on the Clean Power Plan, we had a lot of downs, I'll tell you. Um, but one very, very wise career person said, don't worry, don't worry. I know it's hard to get this rule across and the courts aren't being friendly to us, but look what's happening in the industry. Look at how much cleaner the power sector is getting, and if it was, in fact. Um, so it, it's important to, to take that long, long view. So um, I am going to thank Stan one more time. I also want to thank the people who have helped put this together, um, lest I forget to do that later. So if you help to put this uh, event together, which is not an easy thing, could you wave or stand up or something? Thank you so much. Okay, so let's, uh, we're gonna pr begin with the presentation of awards. I'm told that everybody knows exactly what they're supposed to do and when. Um, uh, Mark Roop, who is Assistant Deputy Administrator, is going to kick things off, and I'm gonna go stand there. Thank you, Janet. Um, I have the honor of introducing the Gold Medal for Exceptional Service Individual Awards. The gold medal at EPA is our highest honor award and can be granted to an individual or a team. It is given on a highly selective basis for distinguished service of major significance to environmental improvement or public service. Recipients must demonstrate outstanding abilities devising or implementing major agency programs or show special skills and achievements in managerial excellence. This year we are honoring, and I think their names are up on the 
board. So um, organizers are going to hate me for doing this. I'm diverging from the script just for a second because I recently learned that a the colleague had not seen Top Gun before. Um, and, um, and so then suddenly all these Top Gun quotes came into my mind. And, and one of them that for those who have seen Top Gun, you'll recall that as the fighter jet people are all coming together for the first time, uh, they're looking at a plaque with a bunch of names and someone says, in case some of you are wondering who the best are, they're up here on this plaque or they're on this screen. So um, to all of our Top Gun people, uh, this year we are honoring Abigail Tiener, Brian Smith, Dave Dickerson, Jason Sachs, John Mitchell, Casey Barton, Kevin Shade, Robert Nunes, Robert Anderson, and Ted Lanzano. And you might all need to walk through. Congratulations to you all. You all breezed through before I get to say anything specific to any one of you, which is fine, uh, because now you can just sit and take it all in um, as I let folks uh, here and online know. Abigail Tiener from Region 5 uh, for your successful development of the Detroit SO2 Federal Implementation Plan, resulting in a 70% reduction of allowable emissions in an environmentally overburdened community. Congratulations. <laughs> Brian Smith from Region 4 for distinguished leadership, unwavering humanitarianism, and an exceptional display of drinking water expertise to support the city of Jackson, Mississippi. Dave Dickerson from Region 1 for consistently demonstrating exemplary, exemplary project management skills that resulted in outstanding and unprecedented progress at the New Bedford Harbor Superfund site. <laughs> Jason Sachs from the Office of Research and Development for sustained excellence in scientific leadership and research within the external to EPA both within and external to EPA on agency high priorities related to air quality and health. John Mitchell from the Office of Air and Radiation for outstanding leadership, coalition building, diplomacy, and technical expertise in leading the US government's international commitment to clean cook stoves and household energy. Casey Barton from Region 7 for exceptional enforcement conclusions that advance environmental protection. <laughs> Kevin Shade from Region 6 for outstanding planning, coordination, and collaboration on numerous initiatives and projects, including the Grants Mining District's Tronk Knox Abandoned Uranium Mines. Congratulations. <laughs> Robert Nunes in Region 2 for extraordinary site management and community relations efforts that were instrumental and successful to the successful investigation and remediation of numerous sources of contamination to Onondaga Lake. <laughs> Robert Anderson from the Office of Air and Radiation for outstanding leadership and expertise in developing and implementing the agency's conventional and renewable fuels programs. And finally, Ted Lanzano from Region 8 for exceptional leadership in creating a national model for coordinating cleanup and redevelopment in Indian country. I'm now going to turn things over to Kimberly Patrick. There we are. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Kimberly Patrick, Principal Deputy Assistant Administrator for the Office of Mission Support. All those things that uh, Stan, Stan named 
-hmm. And he said, you know, the grant specialist, the contract specialist. I'm like, you mean OMS? Yeah, um, yeah that, that's pretty much. Uh, so <laughs> thank you for that. Um, today I'm going to um, read the citations and uh, help us recognize our silver medal awardees, um, individual silver medal awardees. This award ranks second among EPA's honor awards and can be used to recognize an individual or team for highly mer mer meritorious service to the mission of of women, to the mission of environmental protection, unusual courage or competence in an employment-related emergency, or for excellence in supervision and leadership. This year we are honoring the following people. Amanda Halstead, Emily Anwari, Eric Robertson, Jeff Edwards, John Rauscher, Julie Jordan, Katie Flayhive, Melanie Garvey, and Youssef El Masri. I'm going to read each citation, um, but physically present today, we only have two awardees. So I'm going to go in order. If you hear your name, come on up, and you'll take your picture, and we'll keep going. Um, Amanda Halstead from Region 7 is awarded, is being recognized for exceptional innovation in building an inspiring workplace culture of employee engagement and continuous improvement. Emily Anwari from the Office of Water is being recognized um, for her commitment and dedication to ensure the timely issuance of the multi-sector general permit. Eric Robertson from Region 4 is being recognized for contributions to the agency in leadership and transfiguring Region 4's security operations. Jeff Edwards from the Office of Mission Support is being recognized for outstanding leadership in identifying and developing a cost-saving technical solution for, for the multi-agency FOIA online system. John Rauscher from Region 6 is being recognized for distinguished service in the area of human health and ecological risk assessment, which is paramount to the protection of communities. In person, we have Julie Jordan from Region 10. I'm sorry, Region 9. In recognition of distinguished service tackling an array of, of illegal disinfectant sales during the pandemic, including a case against a nationwide retailer selling products in low-income communities. <laughs> Next, we have Katie Flayhive from the Office of Water. In recognition of vision, leadership, and tireless work ethic in establishing the Gulf Hypoxia Grant Program under the authority of the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. We also recognizing Melanie Garvey from the Office of Enforcement and Compliance Assurance for a lifetime of contributions to environmental protection. And finally, we have Youssef El Masri from the Office of the Administrator being recognized for exceptional efforts in managing the Quill Enterprise Information Technology Development Project and for unparalleled, uh, unparalleled contributions to the application's design, functionality, and interoperability. <laughs> All right, we are now going to honor the teams awarded the gold medal for exceptional service and silver medal for superior service. The gold medals for exceptional service from Region 1 are awarded to the teams titled Chelsea Creek NPDES Permits Team, Long Island Sound Out of Basin Permitting Strategy for Total Nitrogen and CSOs, Region 1's Lead Compliance Action Team, Region 1 Clean Air Act General Duty Clause Initiative Team, and Vineyard Wind Team. The gold medals for exceptional service from the Office of the Administrator are awarded to the teams titled Environmental Justice American Rescue Plan, Climate Adaptation Implementation Plan Development Team, and Social Cost of Greenhouse Gases Team.
The gold medals for exceptional service from Region 2 are awarded to the teams titled EPA Electric Grant File Solution Team, Lime Tree Bay Section 303 Enforcement Team, New York City Department of Education Area Source Boiler Consent Judgment Team, and Zumi Judicial Enforcement Team. The silver medal for superior service from Region 2 is awarded to the team titled Grass River Remediation Team. The gold medals for exceptional service from the Office of Air and Radiation are awarded to the teams titled Aircraft Greenhouse Gas Rulemaking Team, American Rescue Plan Enhanced Air Quality Monitoring for Communities Team, Earth Contract Award Team, Light Duty Vehicle Greenhouse Gas Emissions Standards Rulemaking Team, and Revised Cross-State Air Pollution Rule Update Team. The silver medal for superior service from Region 2 is awarded to the team titled AIM Act Allocation Rulemaking Team. The gold medals for exceptional service from Region 3 are awarded to the teams titled NASA Wallops Flight Facility Site Team and Pennsylvania Reasonable Achievable Control Technology Federal Implementation Plan Team. The gold medal for exceptional service from the Office of the Chief Financial Officer is awarded to the team titled Fiscal Year 2022 to 2026 EPA Strategic Plan Team. The gold medals for exceptional service from Region 4 are awarded to the teams titled the Great Lakes Dredge and Dock Team and the Weather Processing Tool Team. The silver medals for superior service from Region 4 are awarded to the teams titled Atlanta Redesignation, Ocean Era Permit Team, and Pineville Old Davis Enforcement Team. Jeanette Menz and I am the acting chief of staff for the office of OMS. Yay, OMS. <laughs> and I will continue the team awards. The gold medal for exceptional service from the Office of Chemical Safety and P Pollution Prevention are awarded to the teams titled Chloropiferous Revocation Team, National PFAS Testing Strategy Team. <laughs> the silver medal for superior service from Office of Chemical Safety and Pollution Prevention is awarded to the team titled Team to Develop Lead Safety Work Practices Through Education and Outreach. The gold medals for exceptional service from Region 5 are awarded to the teams titled Peoria Innovative CSO and SSO Consent Decree Team, Region 5 U.S. Smelter and Lead Refinery Site Team, Southeast Chicago Clean Air Team. <laughs> the silver medal for superior service from Region 5 is awarded to the team entitled Region 5 Cleveland Cliffs Burns Harbor Enforcement Team. The gold medals for exceptional service from the Office of Enforcement and Compliance Assurance are awarded to the teams titled CID 
OCE Power Performance Enterprise Incorporated team, New Indy Katawab LLC team, Reducing Significant Noncompliance National Compliance Initiative, and Tech City former IBM criminal case team. The gold medal for exceptional service from Region 6 is awarded to team titled Region 6 Groundwater Center. The gold medal for exceptional service from the Office of Environmental Justice and External Civil Rights is awarded to the team titled Development and Release of Interim Environmental Justice and Civil Rights in Permitting FAQs. <laughs> the Civil Medal for Superior Service from the Office of Environmental Justice and External Civil Rights is awarded to the team title OEGECR Strategic Planning and Reorganization Team. <laughs> The gold medals for exceptional service from Region 7 are awarded to the teams titled Region 7 Cross-Region Lead Team, WD Technical Assistant Efforts to Tribe Team, the silver medals for superior service from Region 7 are awarded to teams titled HPI Case Team, Region 7 DICO Site Redevelopment Team, and SEMO led sites team. The gold medal for exceptional service from the Office of General Counsel is awarded to the team titled Equity Framework Team. Okay, I will now pick up on the award um, announcements. First up, the gold medal for exceptional service uh, from the Office of International and Tribal Affairs is awarded to the team entitled U.S.-Mexico Border Team. <laughs> the silver medal for superior service from the Office of International and Tribal Affairs are awarded to the teams entitled EPA Leadership on the White House Council for Native American Affairs, and Safe, Accountable, Flexible, Efficient Transportation Equity Act of 2005, a legacy for users. <laughs> the gold medals for exceptional service from Region 8 are awarded to the teams titled Bonita Peak Mining District Settlement Team, Dewey Burdock Underground Inter Inter Injection Control Team, Summit Midstream Partners Team, UNO Federal Implementation Plan Team, and Excel Comanche CCR Enforcement Team. <laughs> the Gold Medal for Exceptional Service from Region 9 is awarded to the team entitled Exceptional Events Team. <laughs> the Silver Medal for Superior Service from Region 9 is awarded to the team titled Montrose Litigation and Settlement Team. The Gold Medals for Exceptional Service from the Office of Land and Emergency Management the mighty Olam, I have to say that because Nigel's not here. I got you, Barry. 
<laughs> are awarded to the teams entitled EPA Strategy to Reduce Lead Exposures and Disparities in U.S. Communities Team. and the PFAS Destruction and Disposal Work Group. <laughs> the Silver Medal for Superior Service from the Office of Land and Emergency Management is awarded to the team entitled Coal Combustion Residuals Team. The gold medals for exceptional service from Region 10 are awarded to the teams titled Logan, Utah, Idaho, Fine Particulate Matter, Non-Attainment Area, Kosh Valley, Non-Attainment Area Team. <laughs> and the North Slope Borough Settlement Team. And there's one more, the Warm Springs Treatment Plant Funding and Technical Support Team. The silver medals for superior service from Region 10 are awarded to the teams entitled Puget Sound No Discharge Zone Team, and the Region 10 Ballard Mine Cons Consent Decree Negotiations Team. The gold medal for exceptional service, truly exceptional service, <laughs> from the Office of Mission Support is awarded to the team entitled, very simply, Return to Work. The silver medals for superior service from the Office of Mission Support are awarded to the teams titled EPA's COVID-19 Contact Tracing Program. <laughs> and this is one we can all get behind, the Headquarters Conference Center Build Team. <laughs> The gold medals for exceptional service from the Office of Research and Development are awarded to the teams, <laughs> just stay up here, um, <laughs> of title Cumulative Impact Research Team, <laughs> Underground Storage Tanks Team, And the silver medal for superior service from the Office of Research and Development is awarded to the ORD TOSCA Prioritization Approach Proof of Concept Team. <laughs> the gold medals for exceptional service from the Office of Water are awarded to teams entitled COVID-19 Wastewater Based Surveillance Team. The Office of Water Sector Supply Chain Response Team. The Office of Water Wildfire Response and Recovery Team. The Office of Water's Bipartisan Infrastructure Law Implementation Team. And the Waters of the United States Team.
The silver medal for superior service from the Office of Water is awarded to the team entitled the Clean Water Act, the Clean Water Act Section 106 Tribal Grant Guidance Revision Work Group. And I'm now going to hand it off to Laura. Good afternoon, I'm Laura Ebert, and I am the incoming chair of the National Honor Awards Board. And I'm delighted to be here with you today to celebrate folks in person and uh, online with us, and also to serve in this capacity as the chair of the awards board for the upcoming cycle. This has been an incredible celebration. Thank you to everybody who made time for this and for everybody who made it possible. This, the dedication and the excellence of the EPA community is absolutely inspiring. And this ceremony is just a snapshot, just a tip of the iceberg of all of the work that's happening every day around EPA, all of the commitment that every employee has to EPA's mission. I want to thank you for everything that you do every day to support the mission of this agency. I'm so proud to work here. I'm so proud to work alongside so many folks who believe in the mission to protect human health and the environment. I know that everyone has choices for how you spend your time, your energy, your love, your one, your one precious life. And I really appreciate that everyone here and everybody who works for this agency has chosen to spend it in pursuit of something great, the mission to protect human health and the environment. I can't wait to see what we're going to accomplish in the coming year. I look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you so much for your time today. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you.